last time on D&D Minus. I'll tell you what you want to know. Your boy Floon got flipped, duped, taken. We were sitting here having drinks, and then who should enter the bar and take him away herself but the black dragon, Sarah Flair. And there's a giant warehouse on your left, and it across it is like a very crudely drawn banner that says, Home of the Black Dragons, keep out. I think I found their secret hideout. Do I need to roll for initiative or something? Will our heroes discover Floon Puff? Will they make it through the terrors of the Black Dragons? There's only one way to find out on this week's episode of D and D Minus. Morgan, are you the only one who needs healing? I think so. I didn't so take go- any damage. I'm pretty badass. Yeah, yeah go ahead too. and heal yourself up. Uh, we could say that you got a healing potion from the bartender after your bare knuckle brawl with Mark Lark. Okay. Maxon. So I'm um, full HP? Full HP. Okay. And we could just jump in. And we get to avoid the moment where your characters stand outside of an infamous hideout of criminals and then go, so you guys want to get a hotel? <laughs> <laughs> There's a place I over don't in think the- we should <laughs> avoid that moment, though. Just but okay. sit down and play patty cake for it's a little too- bit. Yeah, exactly. Full short rest. All right. So you are standing outside the warehouse hideout of the Black Dragons, the most dangerous and deadly gang in the city. Not a crime or misdeed goes by in town without their hand in it. From the outside, it appears the doors and windows are locked and boarded up. But at the corner of the warehouse nearest you, there's a plain wooden door that appears to be unlocked with a sign on it that says entrance. So y'all want to get a hotel or something? Or you just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over and knock on the door. As Bridget knocks on the door ever so slightly, it sort of creaks open and you can see a very bright light and white floors and white walls made of like a nice stone inside, but it's just open a very, very little bit. Uh, perception check. Yeah. Uh, roll it. That's a 24. Uh, yeah, everything looks totally fine. What you do notice is that um, this appears to be almost like a foyer or a lobby area, that this is a lot more public facing a business than maybe you first expected. All right. It's a shop in here, everybody. Well, let's see if we can go buy that feller we're looking at, Foon Ploff or whatever the hell his Sounds name was. excellent. So as you walk into the space, instead of the musky warehouse you expected, it's magically illuminated with clean white walls. On one side of the room is a glowing arcane map that kind of looks like what we would think of as like a mall map. And it has the various departments marked on it in bright golden letters. And at the center of the room is a large granite desk with a massive half-ogre security guard sitting behind it. The ogre is covered in shimmering plate mail. It's got like blue sparks going across it. You can tell it's been magically imbued with all kinds of powers. He's got a dangerous-looking war hammer on his hip. And at his breast is a name tag that reads Greg. Greg the ogre. Hello. Hello, Greg. Is that your name? Mm-hmm. Hello. Uh, we're looking for one friend of ours. Goes by the name of Floon Puff. Mm. Have you seen him? You see, he reaches under his giant granite desk and he pulls out a little clipboard that is just dwarfed by his hand. It's, it's just barely fits into the center of his palm. He sort of looks over it and goes, Floon, Floon. Is that like a made-up prank name? Like, like, yeah, that's oh, exactly oh, what I said. I told you this was Let's say we're looking happen. for Floon, but is that what you're doing? Because I don't have it on my list. Well, then I guess, but no, it's not a, not a, it's not made up. I guess you don't have it. Oh, it looks made up to me. I'll bet you all 
are just here to play a prank on me. <laughs> and as the half ogre rises to his full height and starts to reach for his war hammer, you hear a voice. Snedrick? Snedrick Ferndangle? And Snedrick, you turn around and it is Dustin. Named for patron Dustin, the gay atheist black sheep of the family. Your snogs bane dealer. <gasps> Snedrick, dude. Hey, what you doing here, man? You going for this, oh. the Cinnabon? No, no, this is where I like provide from, dude. What are you? No, Greg, Greg, they're cool, man. They're cool. Oh, what are you guys doing here? Hey, I was, I was going to go to the Cinnabon, but I, you know, figure we would smoke a little snogs man beforehand, get an appetite. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I mean, I'm going to be super honest with you. Like, generally, and I, I say this as like your friend, as like your close friend, because I consider us really close friends. Generally, people don't come to the warehouse. That's like frowned on. But like, uh, yeah, if you guys want to come back, I can like hook you up with some Snogsbane and some SB. I got some really cool strains right now. Who are your friends? I really hate your friend right now. Yeah, try to act like you don't, because... Oh, man, I could hear with my ears, though, dude. You're the worst. I was saying it out loud. Oh, this guy, he loves to roast. Snedrick, will you introduce <laughs> us to your friend here? Yeah, this this here is my friend Dustin. Uh, he's uh, he's in sales, right? Big wank <laughs> right there. And this is my friend Dave over here. He likes to say things just to see if he can get a reaction out of folks. You know how folks get. Uh, this here is Bridget. Bold, Boulder Dash or something like that. She's a good friend of mine. I know her Close very enough. well. Yeah. And this here's a bird. Whoa, he's real? I gotta admit, I thought I was hallucinating him. <laughs> That's awesome, man. And he sort of starts to lean towards Claw, and he, it's very clear that he wants to pet you, but he's sort of doing it slow, <laughs> hands out. I let him he, pet me. Yeah, he just <laughs> pets you for a little bit. All right, you guys, uh, you guys want to get all snogged up? Uh, I have a question first, if you don't mind. Go ahead, Bumper Stash. It's Boulder Stash. Boulder like a boulder and stash like a mustache. Anyway, uh, I was wondering, have you have you seen someone, a, a very fancy fellow, kind of blonde hair, uh, goes by the name of Floon Puff recently? Nah, dude, I haven't seen anybody like that. That's so weird, because usually when it comes to Puff, you know the guy, right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> this that's, guy. There's a little this joke guy. I like to make about that. Yeah. I do, though. I do. Yeah. I do. Let's snog you guys up. And he starts to head through the double doors on the right side of the orc. Hell yeah. All right. So you go through the doors, and you find yourself in a long hallway. You, you pass a door on your left that is labeled Kidnapping and Acquisition. And at the end of the hall, where... Dustin is headed, there is a door labeled drying room with a large sign on it that depicts a cartoon half ogre uh, blowing out a torch. And beneath it, it says in golden letters, Greg, the good gang member, never brings an open flame into the drying room. <laughs> uh, and then Greg cl clearly burnt this place down at least several times. <laughs> And then on your <laughs> left-hand side, you can see there's another hallway that goes a little bit further down. There's a double door down that hallway that says, management, enter at your own risk. So you're at the door of the drying room, and Dustin sort of stops at the door just in front of two large purple runes. Bridget, you know this, and, and Snedrick, you already know this. These are simple warding runes. They're just locks. They're magical locks on doors. And he sort of waves you guys backwards like he doesn't want you to see and wants some space. And he sort of leans down and whispers something to the runes and their colors fade. And then he walks forward and gestures the four of you inside. All right. Can I roll for hearing what he whispered? Yes, you can. Who's got the best investigation? Maybe I should roll that. I got a plus five. I have a 15 and a plus five. So there you go. So oh, yeah, fuck yeah, do that. There you go. All right, roll for it, and you're going to roll against his perception. All right, what am I? Uh, Snedrick, I'm rolling you a 20. want to try to perceive that whisper? Yeah, D20. Yep. Well, you want to not say that out loud? <laughs> All right, I got a five. Okay, he got a two. 
<laughs> which is so <laughs> fitting. So let me paint the scene here. Snedrick loudly, loudly at full volume, as though he is whispering, goes, I'm going to listen to what he says. But that's okay because Dustin... Go turns around and goes, and I gotta remember the password is open sesame, okay? Don't let me forget that, all right, dudes? <laughs> don't don't like tell anybody at the same time. And then he gestures you into the room. All right. As you enter the room, you are shocked by the giant, freshly cut, drying bushes of snogsbane that hang down from the ceiling. I try to steal some snogsbane. Oh Roll a slide of hand check. Uh, wait, let me finish describing it first. You might not want to make that choice. So, okay, uh, you are shocked by the giant, freshly cut bushes of snogsbane that hang down from the ceiling about 50 feet above your heads all the way to the floor. On a catwalk about 20 feet up, there are two guards at either side of the room with menacing looking crossbows and Dustin pulls a sack from a dispenser on his right and turns to you and says... So how much can I get you, dudes? Well, I figure we each gonna throw in on a on an ounce, right? Each of us. That's I thought their... you said snogs pain doesn't affect me. I'm not throwing. Well, in that's well. no. That's why we would all be here in the room together, is because we were all gonna get some. So, and even if we were just gonna give it to Snedrick later, wouldn't really matter what we were gonna do with it. That's a weird strategy. That's fair. Snedrick, um, try and haggle with him, and I will steal Snog's bane oh, on the side. With the two, I can I. <laughs> I, I think he was saying that out of character. I think also? Morgan was saying that to Noah. <laughs> yeah, I know. One hundred percent. I'm saying I was this not. out of character. Do you hear a fucking accent? Do you hear a fucking <laughs> fantasy In the dwarven real world, accent? Anna no, Elbow's I'm gonna. Elbows Morgan. <laughs> 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 I still whisper to Snedrick, if you haggle with him, I will steal some snogs, man. So you still doing that buy three, get one free thing that y'all usually do out here? I know the Cinnabon does that. I think this is a persuasion check. So roll a persuasion. Not sleight of hand? Uh, no, this is a, a persuasion check for Snedrick, and it'll be a sleight of hand check for you, uh, Claw. I rolled a one, so. Okay. Uh, you rolled a one, so he's he's he goes, whoa, man, I thought we were friends. Friends don't ask friends for discounts. And you can tell he's, like, deeply, deeply hurt that you asked for it, but, like, you're still cool. And uh, Morgan, you or Claw, you want to run, uh, you want to roll a sleight of hand check? Yeah, which dice? Uh, D20. <sighs> Eight plus three. All right. First guard. Jesus First guard rolled a three. Christ, I hate you, you all. So far, so good. Second Why are you trying card? to steal stuff? Okay, we just figured out the password. It's open sesame. <laughs> we can go in later and take all we want. There's a crossbow guy right there. <laughs> you are talking in your character He's so voice. stupid. He didn't even hear it when we said, we're going to listen to you whisper a second ago. Look at him. I, He's not even I making eye going, contact with any of us. I am going to elbow him again. Oh, look at that. I got a uh, uh, for elbowing, 14. <laughs> for elbowing day. Just so you know, yes, if you I keep am. unarmed Dave attacking Dave, Dave the Dragon class? and I actually let you do damage, you will kill Dave the Dragon. <laughs> I am okay with the consequences. Dave, I have just taken out my blunderbuss, which is a very large gun. <laughs> All right, so I'm not hearing any of that battle, that, ju that, that PvP fighting that just went on. Luckily for Morgan, uh, the guards rolled a three and a six, respectively, so you steal... A big oh, hunk of snogs bane and God. shove it in your feathers, your bag. Cloaca. But yeah, sure. you you stuff a big <laughs> hunk of snogs bane in there. I wink at Snedrick. I do a silent prayer under my breath to thank Valcor and Umberly for <laughs> being so fair. All right. I also wink at Bridget. I give him a death stare. And I do very like much a little, don't little wink at finger Dave. across my neck. <laughs> Greg, just so you know, Dave just. just <laughs> Greg, just so you know, uh, the bird just stole a bunch of your drugs. <laughs> Greg is outside in the hall. Greg he is fucking here. here. Dustin is Pay the attention. drug dealer who's in here with you. Dustin, just so you know, the bird stole a bunch of your drugs just now. Just to be clear, do you actually want to tell the drug dealer with two armed guards right next to him that the bird just stole some drugs? I feel like I'm earning respect here and I'm going to be able to like... Get in. Do you know how much damage a fucking crossbow does compared to my goddamn elbow? 
Not to me, though, because I'm the guy who's snarking. Yeah, to you. I stealthily yes, plant the you. drugs on Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is a persuasion check for Dave. Go ahead. 18. Great. Slight of hand oh check for God. Uh, I don't Morgan you. to plant the drugs on Dave. 14 plus three. Suck All it. right. So, uh, so Dust... Dustin says, wow, crazy imaginary bird. I'd never think you were capable of that. And then he goes over and he sort of pats you down, doesn't find any drugs, and just goes, I knew you would never do that to me, imaginary bird. Dude, that's not cool. Don't narc on your friends, okay? <laughs> and then he makes hard eye contact for like a little bit too long with you. You guys are the worst <laughs> drug dealers I've ever seen. So so are we going to, to are we going to do this shit? Yeah, yeah, follow me. Come on. So he takes you out of the room into the hall again, leads you out of the door with your bag of snogs, Bane, and uh, the... Which door? Uh, the, the only door in... There's only one door in and out of the room. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so Sorry, we were back in the hallway. You're back in the hallway, All right. and he walks down that hallway towards the management office, but quickly turns before that office into a door labeled accounting, and he says, uh, hey... You dudes wait here, okay? I'm, I'm going to get you all rung up. And hey, Dave? Dave? Yeah, what? I love your jokes. I love your attitude. But sometimes you bring negative energy into spaces that don't need it. Okay? <laughs> and then he goes in and closes the door. All right, I'm going to go down and see if Floon Puff is in that fucking room. I bet it's open sesame just like the other one. All right, so uh, you go to the kidnapping room, which is down the hall. Yep. The kidnapping room has a thick wooden door marked with a large purple rune in its center, just like before. Is anybody coming with me? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'll tell you what, y'all go with her because I'm kind of useless in a fight. I'll stay here and I'll tell Dustin he imagined y'all if he comes back out. Yeah. Love it. That's perfect. All right, cool. And now, guys, mm -hmm. shut the fuck up when we do this, okay? Sounds <laughs> good? All right. I feel like that was directed okay. at me. So next <laughs> to the door is the sign... Another cartoon sign that depicts a cartoon ogre pressing his palm to a cartoon version of the rune on the door in front of you. And underneath it, in golden letters, it says, Greg the Good Gang Member always remembers to reactivate the door room. Okay, so it's just going to be clearly okay. open. We don't even need to use the code, right? Uh, not necessarily. Just try to open it. It just means, it just, okay, I'll, I'll try to open it. Wait, wait, before I do that, um, can I search... Would I know if that would trigger something? You could do a perception check. A perception check. That's nat 20. Nat 20, yeah. This is, you can tell, this is the exact same rune that you saw in the room. Same color, same markings, same wizard made it. Um, so you have every every chance to believe that this is the exact same rune that led you into the giant room of drugs. Cool. I'm going to whisper open sesame to it. Door pops open. All right. And we're going in. All right. You're all going right? in except for Snedrick, who's going to wait in the hall? I'm going to be smoking some snogs, Bane, here in the hallway while I wait on y'all. So as the three of you walk into the door of the kidnapping and acquisition room, you enter a security cage whose walls spark with dangerous green light. On the other side of the cage, four guards sit at a wooden table playing cards in front of three large metal cages. Two of the cages are empty. However, one is not. Inside the center cage, there is a young man wearing fancy clothes, fast asleep on a cot. Excuse me, sir. Are you Floon Puff in that center cage? <laughs> Jesus Wake up. Christ. So one of the guards obviously hears that and walks over to the safety cage that you are all in and says, uh, Hey, uh, who are you? W what are you guys doing here? I've got brought this uh, giant dragon fellow to, Hello. to be, uh, he, I kidnapped him. And he's supposed to go mm, in one of those hey, things. That's right. Um, uh, that's a persuasion, right? Intimidation. That is what persuasion. Am I doing? Yeah, roll persuasion. Okay, that's nineteen. Um, he's got a mouth on him. That one. Don't believe all the things right. that come yeah, out. Yeah, no. Mouth. I, I mean, if you're gonna check anybody into kidnapping, you have to do that through management. Uh, you sure you got this guy? He looks uh, kind of dangerous. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually bringing her to be in the cage. Is what's happening. She is lying. Yeah, see how, see that the, the idiot thinks that this is, this is, this is typical. Work she switches things and it does this lying thing where she says the opposite all the time. All right, well, look, I don't know which of you is in charge, 
But <laughs> you obviously, one of you knew the password to get in here. And whoever knew the password knows that in order to get into kidnapping, you got to run all people we kidnap past management. So I'm management, not letting anybody right. yep. pass this magic cage. Uh, can I just tell you the fucking password so it's you can open, open this cage? I knew it. I said it's it open first. Sesame, I, I exactly. I'm in the room. I obviously know the password. All right. Um, perception on how to get past this cage. Is it like how it opens? Uh, yeah, it appears to be a magical cage. It does appear to have uh, a rune on the inside of it that you could say a password to. But since you just said open sesame, you assume it's a different password um, to get actually into the kidnapping room itself. There's no little ogre cartoon or anything like that? No ogre cartoon inside the safety cage. How strong does this cage look? Uh, it's made out of metal, and it's also glowing with sort of green magical sparks that mm. that I'll, I'll tell you, based on your passive perception alone, feel like they would probably do something bad if you, like, struck them or tried to destroy the cage. I feel like I'm going to go back and ask Greg what the password is to this because he's dumb. <sighs> you mean Dustin? Either one. He okay. means Greg. Greg is the ogre in the foyer. Dustin, Dustin is the drug dealer who's currently in accounting. I feel like I'm going to go ask Dustin what the password is to this cage because he's dumb. I just need to do some paperwork with the uh, Dustin guy. I'll be back in yeah, a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to management. We'll be right back. And, and I step outside. Buddy, just taking a moment to hop in and thank you for listening to our show. Uh, if you're enjoying the show, why not head over to iTunes and give us a five-star review or tweet about the show, tell your friends about it, especially early on while we're just starting the show like this. Uh, the more people you tell about it and the more five-star reviews you give us, the more people hear about it and the better the chances are that we can make this a bigger and better thing. Uh, if you're loving the show, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus, all spelled out, uh, and financially support the show. For just a dollar or two per episode, you can get a commercial free version of the show. At higher levels, you get extra stuff like the chance to name a character or put a wondrous item into the show. There's all sorts of good stuff there. And by the time you're listening to this, there should be a Dungeon Masters Q&A up on the website. So you'll be able to hear how I got into Dungeons & Dragons and my advice for running a campaign and what tools I use. Because it can be a little bit daunting at first. Right, so with all that said, thanks again so much for listening, and now, back to the show. All right, you are back outside the kidnapping room. I assume you meet up with Snedrick in the hallway. Okay, so we need we <sighs> Y'all we need a plan. this up, didn't you? No, I didn't fuck it up. At least I can be, you know. We need happy a plan. That. Is if that clipboard that Greg has has names on it, then we can f maybe get into the. Well, the people who we gotta ask are right there in management. So. Right, but if we steal the clipboard from Greg, then we will know the names of those people. We'd have a better chance of doing something in that room than and then just walking in. Yeah, we could just say like. Steve approved it, but we just don't know mm -hmm. if they have a Steve. All right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Do you're I? Friends, I you're friends room. with that guy, Yo. Dustin. I feel like you can just ask him for the password. Go the for it. Either of you. But what if he doesn't have the password to that thing? What if he's just a Snogs Bane dealer? We'll, well, we'll find out. Yeah, he he doesn't even work in kidnapping. Yeah, they seem like different departments. There was a sign on the door that, yeah. specifically addressed to him. No, okay, it was addressed to Greg. Greg. No, it was to Greg. Well, before, let's not just ask Greg. Let's come up with a plan to distract Greg so that we can steal his clipboard. I think I got an idea how we might distract Greg. Okay. Does it involve Snogsbane? It involves Snogsbane. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Phenomenal. Let's do it. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Before we go in, I'll say, how about this? How about I go in and see if I can distract Greg <laughs> first? And then get him not paying so much attention when y'all come in. He might not notice how many of you there are in case, you know, Claw wants to get around behind him. So you're going into the foyer by yourself. Yeah, yeah. With I, I will face the ogre alone. All right. Great. So the half ogre is sitting there at his desk. Sort of gives you a nod as you walk into the room. Hey, what's up there, Greg? Um, not much. Hey, let me ask you a question. They have pretty strict rules here about you know, smoking on the job or, or whatnot. 
Oh yeah. Cool, way, but I'm not on the job, so I can I can hang out and smoke with you, right? Because I was always wondering when you're a half ogre, what's the other half? Um, for me, I think it's a rock. Oh, right on. Half ogre, <laughs> half rock. You you want to know a secret? Yeah, I sure do. Come come in, come in. What's that? This isn't armor. I'm half rock. That has some crazy shit, man. You want right? you want to know? Oh, so y- you want to know a secret that I have? I uh-huh. got a crush on a girl who works up in management in this place. That's really why I came by was to see her more than to get this snogs, man. I wanted the snogs, man, too. But I'm trying to write. She works in kidnapping and acquisitions, and I'm trying to write a poem, like a love poem for for. But I can't think of any words that rhyme with the password. For that magic cage that she always has to go through. It's a little inside mm-hmm. joke with us. She can't think of any rhyming words that rhyme with that. And and so I just been, yeah, well, anyway, so yeah, I got a crush on her. You know how it is. You want to smoke some snogs, man, with me, man? Oh, uh, not on the job, but I wish I could help you, friend, but I don't know the password for kidnapping. Only, well, only the people who work there know it. I just work the front desk. Yeah, that's why I didn't say it. I didn't want to let it slip out. She done told me one time on an accident, but don't t- don't say nothing, you know. Okay, I won't. I don't want to get her in trouble. So I stealthily enter the foyer while this is going on. Okay, so you were hiding. Yes. Sure. Roll a... What am I having you roll here? Probably stealth that. check. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why you added yep. that adverb Roll the stealth check for me. Into the- <laughs> 13 plus 5 Alright, give me one second I'm going to look up Greg's uh, Perception Why I didn't assume that you Were going to Have to use his perception I don't know, I've got no one to blame But myself for that <laughs> Don't know why Didn't know this ahead of time Yeah, you sneak in He does not see you as you enter the room Great uh, and then I try, where is the clipboard located? It's in his hands. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to roll for that. <laughs> okay. Well, you are... I try and I'm motioning to Snedrick to try and get him to like, you know, yeah, get yeah, his okay. hands free or something. Hey, you ever try to do that thing where you have to rub your belly and pat your head at the same time? Look, I can't even do it. I'm so high. I bet you can't either, huh? Uh, I think this is a persuasion check. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check for me. All right. Word of warning, y'all. I have not rolled anything higher than a six since we started playing this game. Well, then so. it's about time. You do. A 20. A tw- Fuck, uh, yes. <laughs> he yeah. throws the clipboard in the air and goes, I <laughs> love the pop the belly tap the head game. <laughs> And he stands up, and you get 100%. He's never been more focused on anything in his life as he, like, very... And he does he does tricks with this thing. You didn't know there were pat the head, rub the tummy tricks, but this ogre, Greg, is doing them. He's doing double ones and backwards and forwards, and he is completely oblivious of that clipboard right now. Okay, so since it is up in the air... Oh, it's going to fall. Uh, can I... Can I roll an acrobatics check as opposed to a sleight of hand check? Why don't you just roll a gravity <laughs> check? 20. Great. Because I have a higher bonus on acrobatics. Than gravity? No, than sleight of hand. I don't think it's acrobatics. I think this is just a straight dexterity check to catch it. Okay. So it'd be just a 20 plus my dexterity modifier? D20, yeah. And this is not going to be a difficult <laughs> thing. So go ahead and roll that D20. <laughs> okay. Ten, 10 plus 3. Great, you catch it. You catch a clipboard <laughs> as, it, as it flies through the air. I mean, you could catch a clipboard. It's not hard. <laughs> Caught the fuck out of that clipboard. Great. And then I immediately exit the fire. All right, what are okay. the names on the clipboard? We're no looking idea. at them. Uh, the names on the clipboard are... One second. Just got to check my notes because I very much assumed you guys were going to make this a clipboard centric activity. So I had this ready. The names are um, Greg Haroldston. His Steve own name is on the clipboard to remind him. Hammermeyer. Different Greg. 
Different Greg. So do they also sign out when they leave the building? It's just a list of names. No one's signed in, no one's signed out. Uh, there's Dustin, the drug dealer who just has the one name. Uh, then there's Sarah Flair, who you've heard about. Uh, and then there's a couple guards' mm. names. Um, Is there anything about department next to their names? Nope, just a, just a list of names. It's just literally names and no other information? Yep. Well, we know Sarah Flair's the, the leader of this band. So what? And we assume she's here since she's on the list. So why don't we go back into the, the guards chamber? Dave, you will be my prisoner again. I thought, not did we really. Not a, this is a game. I thought we said you were going to be this is a, the prisoner. But I what, think, if I, what if I was the prisoner because I'm a well, royal? I'm royalty? Wouldn't one that make of more us sense has for to me the, to be a prisoner? Okay, I'll, I'll I be went, the prisoner. Okay. Fine. Okay. I'm going well, to wait, say. Wait, wait, wait. Would it be better to try and like pass Dave off as a guard? Well, since I brought, I was the first one into the room and I told them that he was my prisoner and not to believe anything that he said. And then he said all that shit. Then. No, we'd go find him. That's what I would do. I'm going to come back. perfect bluff. Can I? Okay. I had a plan. No, I'm, sure, I'm agreeing with your plan. No, no, I'm no, saying no, this no, is no, going to no, work. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just going to back out of the fucking room and can go off be a little my bit own more goddamn quiet? adventures. We're right in the, I feel like they can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I finish my goddamn plan then? Finish? No. Finish your plan. You always do this. <laughs> you literally met me like an hour you, you've ago. You've been doing this know. for an hour. <laughs> what do we know? So we know Sarah's fucking name, which is what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. I could go in there and say, well, Sarah's mad at you now. You should have left me in the first time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, and she and she would she would like to speak to you in her office. Well, who is Sarah? What department is she in? She's the leader Seems of like the she's fucking the clan. Of the whole thing? Yes, she's the black dragon. Yeah, so let's do that. That's good. That's good. So, all right. I'm also right. a dragon. Cool. They probably, you know, I don't know. All right, I'm going back in the thing. I've, I'm dragging him by his arm this time. And. Well, I'm still back here doing the pat the tummy rubbed or uh, pat the head rubbed the tummy thing with him waiting for you guys to bring back the clipboard. So I won't be. Oh, do you want to do you want to give him back his clipboard? I don't give him back the clipboard, but I don't go in the room with you. Uh, why not? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just because. Fun. Cool. So two people. That's great. This is a great plan. What are you gonna do when the guards come out? Go do your thing. You're gonna you're gonna literally stand here. No, but I'm just not like going a in weirdo? with you. No, I'm not. I'm not in the room with you. I'm outside in the hall. Yes. Well, I haven't gone into the room yet because you're sitting out here with a fucking uh, clipboard and the mm -hmm. guards. I'm trying to get the guards to leave that fucking room and come out here. What do you think they're gonna say when they see you? Bird, maybe do you want to just like leave and take a nap for a while and we'll handle the rest of this? <laughs> no, nope, I'll stay right here. Do you want to toss the fucking clipboard back in there so he knows he can stop t doing the fucking belly dance? Nope, he's going to stay right here. Hi, <sighs> okay. He's going to stay right there. Fine. Let's he's just stay right do the All thing right, that I'm you going were saying, into the Bridget. room. Good. All right. So, because you didn't listen to me before, this time Sarah would like to see you in her office, is what I say to these guys. And I assume this is a persuasion check? It is, yes. That is a. That is a 14. Uh, you're telling me that Sarah wants me to see her in her office because I didn't let someone into the room without the password? That's right. She thought that this was going to be so fucking simple, but I guess you guys are just willy-nilly for refusing people to come in here. Come on. I mean, she was come pretty on. clear about the password. Well, uh, man, look how, I guess I look how go... large my eyes are. I could you go see how see big her. my eyes are. You see him? Yeah. Yep. Go my, and see her. I guess, go and see her. I guess. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'll go see her. So one of the four guards stands up, walks out of the back door of the room <laughs> oh, towards <God>. management, <laughs> and closes the door behind him. All right. Well, I'm gonna leave the room then and get ready and because you're leave the room. we have. <laughs> I didn't realize. Guard there was number a back two door. turns to guard number three and goes, "You know what, Nick?" I think those people are on the up and up. All right. I gotta tell you right now. I like how often they enter and leave rooms. I am the, not the suspicious. The things we say are very consistent. That's true. All right. Uh, so you're in the hallway now. Oh, and fuck me. Snedrick, are you still with Greg in the main foyer? I, I feel like at this point, no, I've come back and asked uh, uh, 
claw why the fuck he didn't throw the clint board back in there <laughs> Because I'm going to try and pretend to be Sarah's assistant and use the clipboard to try and make them think they did something wrong. Well, that that whole thing went to shit anyway. Did you ri- guys realize there was a door at the back of the thing? Did not see that door. Yeah. So um, they'll probably know that there's uh, intruders pretty soon. I'm thinking we just shoot shoot the other two guards. There's only two now. And, like, you know, if Claw's willing to do one thing with us, we'd have, like, four... <clears throat> Shall we go back to uh, where what's his face was wait, asking us to wait and pretend like nothing of this happened? Wait, I, what? I feel like they're going to know something's happened, but yeah, I think we should get the fuck away from here. All right. At least there we have an excuse of why we're handi- hanging out there. So you walk back to the area where Dustin left you and you can see through the double doors towards management, the guard sort of gesturing and speaking to someone on the other side of those doors. And then he points outwards towards you. And then he is joined by a young, very efficient looking elven man who says, "Um, yes, I'm told that you're supposed to speak to Sarah right this way, right this way. And then he walks through the doors of management. I dropped the clipboard where we're standing. You're just going to leave it right there? Yep. Great. Are you guys going to follow the assistant guy? Sure. Okay. So the double door that leads to management office of this gang hideout is made out of that super nice pebbled glass. The administrative assistant is sort of back at his desk, unfolding scrolls, writing and replying. And next to the door of management is another poster featuring Greg, the good gang member, about to knock on the door. And underneath it in golden letters, it says, Greg, the good gang member doesn't bring problems. Greg, the good gang member brings solutions. (laughs) So... (laughs) You walk into this outer office and it's very nice. There's plush leather chairs in the waiting room and the administrative assistant sort of busy with his work. As you walk in, he says, Miss Flair is in very important meeting right now. You can wait over there. And he sort of waves you over to some chairs in the corner. And and just as you take a seat in those chairs, you can sort of hear raised voices coming from the inside of the office growing closer. The door opens and a dragonborn steps out saying, You have been asked to keep things safe, Miss Flair, and you have failed. Believe me when I say your organization shall know my father's displeasure. And he storms out of the room past you. And when he leaves, you see a woman uh, where he has sort of moved out of the way. She has beautiful dark skin. She's sort of stunning and she has hair that's tied back. And she wears two daggers across her hips and a long, fierce looking sword on her back. She looks at you and says, excuse me for that outburst. Please come into my office. Sure. Great. So the inside of Sarah Flair's office is similar to its outside. It's decorated in wood and leather. It's got fine mahogany. There's some swords on the wall, as well as a desk full of scrolls and communications from her work running the gang. There's also a portrait. Uh, behind her of some smiling young children of all different races on one of her shelves. And they're all wearing matching uniforms that say the Black Dragons. So they they sponsor a sports team. She turns to you and says, (laughs) so, uh, what brings you to my office? Um, Just just really quick, do you mind um, having your assistant guy get us like an espresso? Oh, yes, of course. And she snaps her fingers and the elf almost magically appears and says, yes, yes, Mrs. Flair. Um... Uh, One espresso, uh, two, three, four four espressos. Do you guys want espressos? I'll have four. Four espressos. I'm fine. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, Four espressos, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Yes, Mistress. Oh, oh, sorry. No, uh, Jeremy, just just three, just three. And he says, "Uh, "Yes, Mistress." Steps out of the room. So, uh, what what brings you to my office? Well, he wanted to apologize on behalf of the on behalf of that last feller. He's a dragonborn too, and 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 he was uh, well. You know what? Never mind. I'm on a lot of. I've been smoking a lot of the snogs bane on the way in here, so you probably can't trust what I have to say at all. Now that I think about it, can I whisper to Claw to maybe pretend he has to go to the bathroom and then grab anything at the desk while Jeremy's gone? Okay, I'm just gonna before that happens. Uh... You absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting on board with your stealing thing. You I get know, it. Like, you're that's not cool. a just fucking everything we go, thief, you know, right? We should just steal everything. Oh, Jesus. Uh, well, we noticed that you 
I mean, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to look over at Snedrick since he seems to have his wits about him as well, even while he's stoned, and be like, I guess just tell her the truth, right? No? What's going on? I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give, uh, Bridget a look that says like, that's never worked well for me before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you say the words, L just tell the truth? No. 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 I just looked you at said him that like with that. your eyes. Um, All right. <laughs> I said that with look, my eyes. Thanks to OOC. He perceives that look. <laughs> Really well. He absolutely. <laughs> the benefit to all D and D characters have telepathy. There's nothing you can do as a DM to stop that. <laughs> well, I was wondering. You have a friend of ours. Goes by the name of Floon Puff. The problem is nobody has been able to tell us why he's here. Oh, um. She sort of pulls a, a scroll and she says, "Jace, uh, Floon Puff." He was, uh, Jess, he was acquired by us for a high-profile client. Um, do you are here to pay his ransom? Oh, hell no. Oh. <laughs> no, we just noticed that he had disappeared, and we wondered why he was being held. He was acquired. Uh, Jess, a, a contract was put out on him for the Black Dragons to kidnap him, and uh, she sort of looks at the scroll and says, well, that is all I can say about the client, but uh, he is quite well. If you are here for uh, assurances for the Puff family, I can go and cut off a toe or an ear if you would like. Uh, they can verify with a wizard that he is alive. That's on. I think that's unnecessary. Uh, Let's do the toe thing. Um, I think that's <laughs> unnecessary. So far, it's tied. Uh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I noticed that you were kind of being chewed up there for a second. From what I know of the Black Dragon group, you you all are very good at your jobs. I've heard, I mean, we've all heard that 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 you're one of the greatest, like one of the, the most efficient workers of all time. So uh, that seems a little odd. Why, is this a bad day for you or what's going on with that? Joe, this may surprise you. Uh, what's your name, by the way? None of you have introduced yourselves, which is weird <laughs> if you think about it, because you're like here and one of you demanded beverages. But not names. <laughs> yeah. I'm Dave, the espresso Dave, guy. the espresso guy. I like it. And honestly, that makes the drink things make sense. Oh, what's your name? Yeah, no, it's my thing. Mm -hmm. My name's Greg. Greg. Okay. Well, that's obviously a fake name. Like, okay. Uh, well, Greg, uh, <laughs> this, may, this may absolutely shock you. But as the head of a gang, when people come into my office and mention a kidnapping victim and then panic when I ask why they're asking and then instead ask me about a private account that they witnessed simply by being near my office. I'm not super open to share. So uh, may I make a recommendation to the four of you? Not that you're not nailing it, by the way, because you are. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me who sent you and maybe we can make a deal. There are two things you should know about me, adventurers. One, I am never above a square deal. And two, I am a liar. And with that, you notice that she has raised her feet slightly from the floor in her chair, and she's holding her hand to a bright white rune on the side of her desk. And before you can react, electricity pulses through your bodies and you black out. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.